Hello, and welcome to my video on installing my custom Stormworks Water Cannon Video Touch Controller, available from my Steam Workshop page listed in the description below. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the components you need to connect to your vessel and the, the correct way to set up the controller and all of the systems that make it work uh, so that you can have touch controls to operate your water cannon inside of Stormworks. Thanks for watching, I hope this video is useful to you. Without further ado, I'm here in the Stormworks workbench and I'm going to take you through all the steps that you need to go through to hook up this uh, water cannon with touch controls. So the first things first, um, the cannon needs a few things. So here will be a list of the components you need and I'll also put it in the description in the, the bottom of this video. And First we're going to need the large pump. If you use just the regular fluid pump, it's not going to work. You need the large fluid pump to actually put enough water through this cannon to make it shoot far enough. So you're going to need a pump and you're going to need piping hooked up. So you're also going to need a cannon. You're going to need the cannon touch video controller from my workshop. You're going to need pipes and then enclosed pipe blocks if you want to close it off so you don't have a hole in your ship. And then you're going to need either regular fluid port or the fluid slot port, which I think is going to be what we want. It's going to work better on this. You can see on the bottom of the ship, I've already installed the fluid slot port, so we'll just pretend I installed that just now. And then that comes up through the floor here into this pipe and this is where we're going to install our pump so just kind of get it to go in there just like that and then we'll connect the pipe here this elbow pipe into it so now we have you know a full pipe uh, going from the slot port to the pump and then up to the top of the ship to the cannon which we're now going to put down right here then we're also going to need video monitor just the one by one it's only going to work on the one by one if you i guess you could use a larger one but it's not going to it's going to only display like a one by one on a larger screen so um, i'll have to make updates to the lewis script to make it resizable if you want to use a bigger screen uh, i might do that in the future i might not but for now it works on a one by one then we'll need a toggle button to turn the monitor on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and place that down, both of these. We have our button, and then we have our monitor. And you want the up arrow, like if you're looking at it on a wall, the up arrow needs to be going up. And then if you're looking down at it, whichever way you want to be facing the cannon. So I could put it like this if I want to be beside the cannon looking down at the monitor. I could put it this way if I want to be looking at the cannon using the monitor. You just put the arrow facing away from you the way that you want to be looking at it whenever you operate it. So we'll get rid of all of these out of here. We'll keep the controller. The controller currently is set up to where it utilizes a 1x5 space. Just like this. See it's one block by five blocks. If you want to change that you can go into the editor, go to the design tab, and then you can go to the properties page and you know you can make it smaller, bigger, you can drop these wherever you want. Um, I'm gonna keep it on one by five for now. Just like this. And then something you need to make sure to do is to drop these back inside onto the white part of the controller itself. If these are outside, it's not going to work. It's actually it's going to give you this little error that says nodes are outside of the microcontroller. So you have to make sure that you place them on there if you change the sizing of it. So <coughs> now that that's done, we have to go into our logic tab and we need to connect everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to connect everything to power. The pump needs to go to power. The cannon needs to go to power. The monitor needs to be connected to power and the button needs to be connected to power. 
the logic controller itself it actually doesn't take power it's, um, it's magical so then we'll start at the data tab for connecting all these components so first thing we need our monitor to turn on so we're going to connect the external input which is the actual button you press on the block to the toggle state the toggle state node is going to go to the power switch node on the monitor so when you press this button it sends the signal through to the monitor on or off so that's how we'll get our monitor to turn on then we'll need uh, to connect the on off from the microcontroller this is the signal the controller sends to the pump to tell it whether to turn off then we have the turret swivel and there's a helpful description there it says this is x-axis but it's also named turret swivel so we're sending the output from the controller to the swivel and then same thing with pitch then we'll need to connect our touch output to the input on the microcontroller and the same thing with our video we connect the signal to the microcontroller and then you can see the way the arrow is pointing this is the video it's sending out to the screen and that's everything connected there and that's all you have to do to set this up so we can go ahead and we can spawn our vessel and then we can just turn it on and it works we now have controls on a touch screen to make our cannon operate and that's pretty cool so thanks for watching this video I hope this was helpful in getting you uh, the ability to set up a fully functional touch screen that operates a water cannon inside of Stormworks I hope you have fun with this. It's been fun for me to make this, and we'll see you next time.